This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hello and welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. My name is Stephanie Mock and I will be your host today. We are joined in the studio with a very special friend of the show, actually founder of the show of Hawaii Food and Farmer Series, Matt Johnson. Um, Matt wears a, many different hats. We know you as Think Tech host, first and foremost, right? That's the most popular role you have. So one that pays, pays the bills. <laughs> pays the bills yep. here, right? Yep. So you're Think Tech host. You're also, I know you don't like the title, but like CEO of Oahu Fresh. Mm. You're a professor of ag business. Mm -hmm. And the reason we have you on our show today is because you're also going to be talking about a different role you have as a marketing professional with some women farmers workshops that you're doing with Oahu RC and D. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you've done this show like a hundred times now, probably, close to. You've been well, doing it last three years. Collectively, yeah. Collectively this as is, a team. Uh, uh, the hundred and second show. Centennial. Woo! Yeah. We made it. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations to you. You Thank started you. it. I've only been here. Well, just, yeah. A short just, of time. Justine actually started it. Oh, okay. And then she and pulled you me on. along. Oh, yeah. Okay. So okay. she's really the. Founder. Well, she, yeah. 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 All right, but I'll take credit for the show too. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. Please do, because yeah, you're gonna have to run it for the next two years. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> anyway, enough about the history of our Think Tech show. Um, we're here today to talk about business building blocks, women farmers workshops with the Wahoo RCND. Wahoo RCND is a nonprofit that was started in 1997, and the acronym stands for the Wahoo Resource Conservation and Development Council. And talking about those multiple roles or many hats that Matt wears, he actually used to be part of Oahu RCND <laughs> back in the day, right? Full circle. Full yep, circle. Yep. Oh We're getting it all together I again. I know. Oahu RCND, now to Think Tech, Women Farmers Workshops. And so our show today is really talking about the work that Oahu RCND has done on the ground here on Oahu and throughout the Outer Islands in establishing a women farmers network, especially providing training opportunities and networking opportunities for women farmers. So there are about 7,000 farms currently in Hawaii, and 30% of those are led by women, which is actually higher than the national average. The national average is 25%. So we are very unique here in Hawaii that we have a higher than um, national average of women farmers who lead their farming operations. Um, especially when Hawaii is not considered a lot in terms of national statistics, this is something that we should be really proud of, especially here in our agricultural sector yeah. that continues to grow um, and is in transition from the plantation days into new diversified agriculture. So Oahu RCND a couple years back decided that they wanted to reach out to women farmers. Our executive director, Jean Brokish, she is a farmer herself. Um, and she wanted to see what women farmers in Hawaii, because they're so geographically isolated, just in terms of islands and you know not having that established network, what do they need to take um, their businesses to the next level and manage their risks? So I, we did a survey of 120 women farmers throughout um, Hawaii, and they identified five topics that they wanted to learn more about. So one of them was federal programs, one of them was agritourism, uh, food safety, another was business planning, and that's where we brought Matt in, who has an extensive history of business planning and ag business, as he's a professor of ag business, to come and talk to the women farmers um, during these workshops to you know, talk about how you establish a business plan for your farming operation and what the benefits are. So, Matt, I was hoping you could talk a little bit about the workshop series that you did last year with Oahu RCND. Where did you go and what did you talk about specifically? Yeah, um, yeah, great intro and great background, I think, on the program and really the importance of it where um, I think these, these workshops, you know, they just go for pretty much like half a day, three-fourths of a day. And I think there's a lot of appreciation for just having events where you know small farmers can get together I think that's probably the the biggest highlight for you know the farms that participate mm -hmm. um, and also you know focusing on women farmers like you said you know Hawaii has a larger uh, the national statistics of, of women farmers and just having events to get together but then also to have meaningful conversations and like you said um, based on the survey that Wahoo RCND did identifying these different topics that you know, people want to hear more about and, and yeah, so we're obviously, you know, we're not there to talk about 
all aspects right. of, of marketing and uh, <laughs> I believe it's like a 30 or 40 minute presentation. I think it's more just kind of getting the conversation started um, and then just really kind of connecting people if there is a specific um, topic or, or something that someone's looking to do. Um, like for example, Pomai is going to be uh, joining us as well. Yeah. And she's going to be another talking about think tech another think tech who we've think grouped tech into women farmers workshops as well. Yeah, we're just but taking like, our <laughs> think tech show on the road. Pretty incestuous. We should. <laughs> are we taping this? Can we do a live a live show tomorrow? Oh, maybe. Okay. We'll right. see. We'll, we'll talk. We'll get some footage. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, Pomai is going to be talking about ag tourism, and then we'll be talking about marketing planning. And yeah, as you said, we, we started this uh, last year, and yeah, we went all over. Uh, we went to uh, Lihue on uh, Kauai, and then we were in, on the Big Island in Waimea. Uh, just Waimea, I don't think we went to Hilo. Yeah. Yeah. And then we went to Maui. Mm -hmm. Where did we go in Maui? I wasn't there, I don't uh, know. You weren't there? Oh. Um, but yeah, I went to Maui, and then we're also... <laughs> you were there. <laughs> yeah, that was a year ago. That's a year ago. <laughs> and then we were, uh, yeah, on uh, Oahu as well, at uh, Kula Ranch. Oh, okay. And um, yeah, so just need to see who's showing up. So you have a variety of uh, farmers that are just kind of curious, maybe getting started, um, and also maybe interested in the Go Farm program, but this is just like a one-day mm -hmm. kind of, you know, hot topic event to kind of get a little taste of all the different programs that are out there. Um, and, and yeah, just learn a little bit about what's happening. So um, yeah, this year, uh, so starting tomorrow, we're going to be up at uh, Kugu Farms mm -hmm. on North Shore here on Oahu. And then next Tuesday, we're going to Kona. Uh, we're going to be at the Honey Bee, what's the name of the farm? Big Island Bees. Big Island Bees. Yeah. I just met Wendy earlier today, mm -hmm. who's going to be our host. And then on Thursday, uh, going to Maui, mm -hmm. uh, Ali'i Kula Lavender. Mm -hmm. um, so not as many trips as last year, but still a good uh, kind of cross section. And it's really neat to see, you know, the the different farms and different um, you know, islands and, and what people are interested in and talking about. And um, you know, I remember last year uh, the group in Waimea on the Big Island. They're just very like. <laughs> Kind of almost like coming at us. I like got very specific questions and. Who are you? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, not even so much that, but just like they, they definitely were there with a, a very specific purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas some of the other trainings, people are like, "Hey, yeah, just stoked to be there and, and whatnot." So it's just neat to see the yeah. different reactions and 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 I love it because I get to learn about you know what people are doing, mm -hmm. um, and especially on the neighbor islands. But there's so many small you know, projects, small farms doing amazing things that you would never hear about because, well, one, you know, farmers don't, you know, really broadcast yeah. or market what they're doing. Right. Which is a whole reason why we have this why? show. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's neat to really just get out there and, and just, just listen and, and see really like, hey, what, what, you know, what's happening? What, what are your struggles? And, yeah. you know, we try to make those connections with, you know, if we can't help you out, well, you amongst all of us, we have a lot of really good networks and we try to make those connections. Yeah. And you were talking about, you know, like most people think of workshops or trainings or conferences. You go and you see the professional speak and that's it. Yeah. And these workshops, you know, had that opportunity to hear from agricultural professionals like yourself. But like you were talking about, you're learning just as much as they are, right? You're learning about what they need, um, what kind of uh, small farms are out there and just kind of business ideas for you. But it also offers the opportunity for that peer-to-peer -peer network, right? That farmer to farmer. So, you know, maybe you can't answer a specific question, but another uh, woman farmer in the audience has had that same issue and knows something that can deal with that issue and a solution. So um, the workshops really focus, you know, on allowing that connection for professionals, especially on outer islands where they don't have as much access, mm -hmm. and then um, giving us a chance to see what's out there, what do farmers need, and how can we help them and learn from them, and then also that peer-to-peer -peer network that you don't always get as a farmer, right? Your, your head's down, you're like trying to get your own business started, and you don't always have that opportunity for development or looking outside of your own farm to learn from others and what their mistakes and trials and tribulations are. Um, yeah, so I think we have a short video, actually, just kind of Ooh. detailing the workshops that were done last year, just like, so people can see photos and see what kind of all the networking was about. So Ooh, fun. Yeah, I mean, don't build it up too much. Where can we Let's where play do we that video. <laughs>
So we've been talking with Matt Johnson. You just saw that video. Of, that was great. Yeah. Oh, I wish you could have heard it. It was just nice guitar music in the oh, background. Oh, okay. So, um, but yeah, so, you know, we, we are kind of done the first half of our show already, and we talked about phase one of um, the workshops that we did last year. And mm -hmm. kind of what is, what is the idea of targeting women farmers? Like why that audience and what kind of tools do they need in their toolbox to lead their farming operations and manage risk so that they can build and continue to grow their operations? So we're going to take a quick break and talk about what's coming up. Thank you. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I'm getting older. Do I need to worry about falling? Yes, you do. Each year, one in four people 65 and older will experience a fall, and many will be serious. The majority of falls happen at home, so remove things that could make you trip and install handrails to keep you steady. To learn more about the steps you can take to help prevent a fall, please talk to your doctor. You can also visit aarpfoundation.org or medicaremadeclear.com slash falls. This message was brought to you by United Healthcare and AARP Foundation. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to come visit with us on Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000 year odyssey, where we explore and examine the plant that the muse has given us. And stay with us as we explore all of the facets of this planet on Wednesdays at noon. Please join us. Aloha. Welcome back. So the first half of our show, we were talking about phase one about women farmers workshops with Oahu RCND. Just to remind you, Oahu RCND stands for Oahu Resource Conservation and Development Council, which is a sustainable agriculture nonprofit based on Oahu that works throughout the islands to support farmers in stewarding natural resources and building their agribusinesses. We're talking today with Matt Johnson, who, like I mentioned before, wears many different hats. But mm. today, specifically, we're talking to him about women farmers. So the first half of our show, we talked about we went to Maui, Big Island, Oahu, Kauai, and you know, talking about the five different topics that women's, excuse me, women identified in their survey of what they wanted to learn more about. Um, and through a grant through um, WARMI, which is the Western Extension Risk Management and Education Center. Oh my goodness, if I mess that up, I apologize. Warmy? Yeah, we made up that name, don't worry. Oh, okay. <laughs> the acronym, W-E-R-M-E. -E. Yeah, um, cool. We were able to get additional funding for what we like to call Phase 2, um, mm. additional workshops on outer islands that have more of a focus. So like you were talking about, the workshops last year were a little bit more broad, right? You mm -hmm. can't go to a workshop and learn everything you need to know in six hours. But it could give you a really good introduction on things that you need to better consider for managing risk and improving your operation. And from those workshops and their evaluations, they identified three main topics that they wanted to focus on for additional training. And that was value-added production, agritourism, and marketing. Mm. We're like, who knows marketing? Do we know anyone who knows marketing? Of course we do. You know a few people. We know a few people, yeah. yeah. Especially professor of ag business, Matt Johnson, right? It just sounds you shouldn't wrong have said that. I'm just going to continue to say that about yeah, you. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so this year we're going to um, we're going to have a workshop on Oahu at Kahuku Farms, which mm. is tomorrow, mm. and we also have workshops on Maui, the Liikula Lavender, and also uh, Big Island, which is Big Island Bees, mm. which is in Captain Cook near Kona. So um, this year we thought, you know, last year was a, a broad introduction. What are some tools? that women can have in their, you know, risk management toolboxes, if you will, um, to really take steps in order to improve their businesses. So I know last year you talked about business planning and you gave a great template to kind of get people started thinking about who's your main audience, that kind of thing. I thought, I was hoping you could talk a little bit more about what you're going to be talking about in these workshops and mm -hmm. what kind of tools you hope to provide women farmers this round. Yeah, so the, the topic that was given to me is, yeah, marketing, planning, you know, pretty broad topic. But what's neat about this round of workshops that we're doing is that it's actually at the specific farms. Mm -hmm. um, so it's great because we're going to Kuku Farms. Uh, Kylie, who's been on the show before, um, I mean, she's really the, the ag marketing you know, expert. So mm -hmm. that's really what we're just going to her place and and leveraging a lot of what she's done there, because I think a lot of what she's doing, what Cuckoo Farms is doing, a lot of other farms want to be doing. Mm -hmm. 
Um, people, you know, you talk to farms like, yeah, um, you know, what, you know, what's your plan? Like, oh, I'm going to grow some stuff and then we're going to do some farm tours. Right. You know, just like it's that simple. Yeah. <laughs> and the Kylie has a pretty amazing story, and I got to work with her pretty closely and and kind of getting that part of the her business up and going, where you know, Cuckoo Farms is second or third generation farms. And then Kylie went to marketing school and she came back and wanted to work on the family business, but also one, you know, had her own ideas. So yeah. that's where she kind of created um, the Cuckoo brand and, and the, this amazing uh, roadside farm cafe uh, up by the shrimp trucks. Uh, fantastic. If anyone hasn't been there, you got to go. You got to go. Um, the I believe it's bowl open Wednesday, yeah, Wednesday through Sunday, and so they're utilizing, you know, ingredients coming from the farm and also uh, neighboring farms as well. And do this amazing uh, eggplant panini, and uh, they do a, a farm pizza and the the, the shakes and yeah. the what's the dessert? Is it acai bowl? There's another dessert. It's the a, liliquoi the, like the cake. The, oh, the I don't bread. know that one. It's it's like liliquoi syrup it's Ooh, yeah. really good but they have an amazing menu it's just a nice area to sit and enjoy and they also do um tractor rides yeah. which seems kind of cheesy at first but People when you them. hop on there yeah. it's the best time ever best time and i'm just impressed with with you know they have you know fully functioning you know farm growing amazing uh, papayas uh also do a lot of eggplant liliquoi uh taro leaf and then they've created this you know, actually cool, fun experience. Like it's a place where you want to go. And it's amazing when you go up there, I mean, it's crowded. Yeah. And they have a neat cross-section uh, of North Shore locals coming by. They also have uh, tourists. Uh, they get some uh, people from Turtle Bay, which is right around the corner, coming by there and checking them out. So in terms of, of marketing, they've just done a really good job. Um, beautiful signage, um, beautiful building. Uh, everything is color coded that goes with their their logo. Mm -hmm. uh, they also have their own value add products, which um, I forget who's going to be talking about that. Someone from SAE Designs, mm -hmm. but there's going to be someone talking about value add, which Kylie and them are doing a lot with Lilikoi products. Um, so they're just really uh, exemplary, uh, you know, in in the different things that they're doing. That I think a lot of startup farms, you know, strive to to try and be at that that level. Right. So, <laughs> so that, that's really what I'm going to be doing is just kind of show, you know, yeah. kind of highlighting more specifically like what's going on here, right? And and talking to Kyle like because this didn't just happen overnight. No, you know, a lot of planning, a lot of thought mm -hmm. uh, went into everything from um, their logo, their color schemes, the signage, their right. beautiful signage, but also understanding too like who are the customers that are coming there. So as I mentioned, you have. You know, your lo your regular locals. You have your tourists, so they're you know reaching out to both different communities. They also have school groups that are coming yes, by they there. Yeah, a lot of field trips. Yeah, a because lot. Because they are a working farm. Even though agritourism venue, they are first and foremost a working farm. Yeah. Yeah. So they have a lot of you know these different groups that are interested in coming by, and so they're creating this experience that you know these different. Um, diverse groups are want to come and check out, mm -hmm. and uh, I think a lot of it is word of mouth, but a lot of it also too is just signage along the side of the road. They're right across the street from the uh, shrimp farms, so I think they get a lot of people coming by and checking it out. Yeah, and um, yeah, beautiful seating with uh, Malka views. Yeah, and um, yeah, just a good spot to hang out. I think they do events as well. I think so. Um, yeah, I really like that idea you brought up of like, you know, this is a great model farm. They incorporate value added, agritourism, marketing, definitely are great with their marketing plan. And then you're talking about, you know, kind of picking it apart, showing um, these new farmers or the women farmers who are coming to the workshop some steps that they can take to get that and recognizing it is a timeline and, and it's dynamic and you're not going to do it overnight, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lot of um, trials. It's going to be a lot of experimentation too. You can't just copy Kahuku Farms. You can't choose yeah. their color scheme, that kind of thing. And really branding it and marketing it as your own personal story, right? No one else can have your own individual story. So how can we market that as, a, as you as a woman farmer leading a operation, how can you we brand or market that individual story so that you can capitalize off it, right? Like yeah. you can create this 
marketing, branding idea that will continue in the future, right? Instead mm -hmm. of just, oh, we're just tomatoes. So, yeah, but how did you get into tomatoes? What's the color scheme? What's your graphic design going to be like? That kind of thing. Instead of just, oh, I, I like to grow tomatoes. How can mm -hmm. we make this a true ag business that will not only produce food locally or internationally, but also help with diversifying our economy as yeah. well? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, you know, we, we, we're going to be Oahu, Maui, and I, excuse me, Big Island, excuse mm -hmm. um, and we have Pumai talking about agritourism. She, um, she's going to be talking a little bit more, I believe, on like permitting considerations or just like kind of small steps. You know, everyone wants that perfect farm of like, yes, we're going to have tractor tours, mm. but what are some tools and actual real steps you can take to begin that process, right? For a woman farmer who you might be out in Puna or something, they're mm. gonna have no idea who to reach out to or what kind of resources. So this is a first step of like, come check out the workshop, meet these other women farmers on your island so you build that network locally, mm. but now they have connections with you and they mm. can reach out, reach out to you in the future and say, hey, can you be a consultant on this project or can you help me build a marketing plan for my farm kind of thing. So yeah. yeah. And I think even more so, you know, having that connection with, with Kylie, you know, talking specifically about the ag tourism part of it, that that literally took, you know, years just to get the proper permitting mm -hmm. to be able to do that. There was something ridiculous with the, the land designation that they were on um, ag park land and they had to get the, the designation changed with Department of Ag, which is the owner uh, of the land there to like non-ag land. There's mm -hmm. some funky terminology that would allow them to do on-farm sales. So that was something that, that really threw them for a loop. Right. And I, I feel like this happens more often than not. And you can do all the planning in the world, but you know, then you run into something like this that could really uh, hold you up. Uh, similar to, uh, I was just talking to Ron Wiedenbach earlier, a Hawaii fish company, Hawaii fish farm up in Mokalea. Yeah, he's been trying to get a long-term lease on his property for, you know, literally 30 years. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I digress. Uh, <laughs> that's going like a whole different show. Yeah, I'm we, like, that, that, that where is, are you going? Has he been on the let's, show? Let's bring it back to women I farmers. I don't know if Ron's been on the yeah, show. Let's Anyways. bring you back. Bring you back. <laughs> um, but, but also, you know, looking too, it's great. Like the parking. You know, mm -hmm. they had to set up parking and fencing. Um, being able to close the parking when, right. you know, uh, ADA ramps. Public bathrooms. Had to put an ramp. ADA ramp, which, you know, these are all big ticket items. Yeah. And that if you're not thinking about ahead of time, uh, it's, it's going to mess you up and just blow up your budget. Yeah. So that, I mean, I think that's also going to be, Pamaya's going to have a great talk um, in kind of getting into the ag tourism part of what's happening there. And um, you know, people can get just a sense of reality of, of how challenging it can be. Yeah. So. All right, well, that's all the time we have for today's show, talking about business building blocks, women farmer workshops with Oahu RCD. We encourage you to check out oahurcd.org slash women farmers for tickets for tomorrow's um, workshop, excuse me, on Oahu, as well as our workshops on Maui and Big Island. We hope to see you there. Until next time, thanks.